Welcome everyone. While everyone is getting tuned in, I am really excited to share this six part episode that I'm going to be working on here with you. I figure while we are all quarantined together, I spent the first month working really hard on taking care of business, taking care of our people, taking care of the things that matter. And now I'm ready to get back to my happy place, which is the course, the classroom. Many of you do not know that I have been teaching French cutting for almost 25 years now. I have an academy here in Atlanta, Georgia, and it's really my first love. I know that I'm known a lot for being the Bali Lama, or maybe I'm even your Bali Mama, but for me, French cutting is really going to help each and every one of us as we begin to ramp back up when our doors are able to open. And it really came to me that I needed to try to do something about that. You know, if you've noticed in the past month, I've been spending a lot of time on webinars and Zoom meetings as well as podcasts, just trying to help my fellow hair community out there uh, try to make some great decisions. You know, we're all scared, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of uncertainty but we now more than ever need to prepare for our recovery. And the recovery is gonna come by doing great things with our techniques. There's been a vast, incredible, wide array of amazing education out there. I too have been tuning in to some of my fellow uh, uh, hairdressers out there that I admire and I love. So as we're here to try to get back into the classroom, my goal is to spend these six episodes with you, just giving you a flavor, possibly a little bit of the cliff notes, if you will, about why I love French cutting, why I think it's faster, it's more efficient, and it's fun. So I hope that we can take this journey together. I decided to do a watch party so that I can actually answer your questions. It's much too difficult to sit and try to teach and read a screen at the same time. So I decided that I would do it this way so that there wouldn't be any confusion because I know this is very new to many of you out there. Uh, and so for me, it was about trying to make this education fun, uh, try to make this education uh, easy, and hopefully give you a little nugget of why I love French cutting. So, with no further ado, I hope you're tuned in. Let's tune into the classroom and pardon my French. So, I want to talk to you a bit about um, why French cutting is so vastly different. And I thought that maybe one of the things that I could do is just take uh, a moment to read to you uh, something that I read in every single class that I teach, and that is Viva la Difference. And Viva la Difference is really the differences between French cutting and um, British hair cutting. Now, I do want to have a disclaimer here to say to you that you must understand that I still, too, cut British haircuts. Um, not many, uh, but uh, I don't want this to seem as though that I'm saying anything negative against it. But what I love about French cutting is the fast efficiencies that it has, but more importantly, uh, the, the quickness and the looks that it gives you. So I thought I would just read this to you. It would make it really simple rather than me just trying to translate that and um, try to help you understand some of the differences. So the difference between the French and the British techniques of hair cutting are the French hairdresser frames the face with the shape of the head. The French hairdresser stands the client up in order to see that in which he or she cuts. Like a painter who looks directly at a canvas, the shape falls from the top down, falling perfectly like a shingle on a roof. Now, I wanna stop right there and explain to you kind of what that might mean to you because you might be thinking to yourself, what do you mean you stand the client up? Well, we stand the client up in order to move the shoulder to be able to see the neckline, the posture, the face shape, the head shape, and all those things in between. Just like a dress designer might make a dress, first they would have a drawing of what it is 
potentially that maybe Harry Styles is making in his new collection. Um, but nonetheless, they will have an, an opportunity to actually sketch out uh, how they're going to make that dress. And then uh, we're going to go through and we're going to actually, like a tailor, we're going to cut the fabric and we're going to iron the fabric. And every single thing that we do is to try to design that work around it. Our layers start on the top of the head and they come down and they fall down, they pivot down. So we'll go into great detail about that in one of my episodes. But first I want to just start you off by understanding more. The French haircutting technique softens the face and accentuates the pleasing features, making the face the center focus the hair, the frame of the artwork. The face is the light and the hair is the shadow. Now it took me a long time. As I said before, I have been cutting French, fr the French technique for over 25 years. And one of my instructors when I moved to, um, actually I started my journey uh, right out of high school. I moved to uh, Paris, France and began to learn from uh, varying people throughout uh, Europe, uh, this methodology of cutting and how quick and how seamless and how fast it was. But one of the things that uh, was really hard for me is one of my instructors kept saying to me, Candy, the face is the light, the hair is the shadow. And I had a really hard time understanding that. It really almost took me quite a while, I'm going to say like 10 years to really figure out what that meant. It sounded really cute in French, you know, the pourquoi in French, you know, somebody with an accent talking about, you know, why the face is the light and hair is the shadow. But then it kind of really permeated with me. And this is how I teach it in my classroom. So think with me for just a minute. If you think of a window, a window is a place where the light comes in, correct? And there's a lot of ways that we can put curtains on windows, right? We could have level or blinds that are very straight and very angled, maybe like my hair. We can have a swag curtain that came around and came, and came down like some of the long looks that we see now. We could have just a valance that came over, maybe a bang, something like that. But ultimately as a hairstylist, what your goal is to do is to take the focal point of the face and make that come alive. When I'm teaching a young stylist how to do a great consultation or I'm teaching them how to uh, actually think through where to put the hair, it's really about opening and closing. So for me, when the face is the light, that is what is open and the hair actually closes down around the face uh, to uh, uh, accentuate the pleasing features, to accentuate the parts of the face that you want to show off. I mean, let's face it, as stylists, sometimes a woman will come in, her face shape might be round, her face shape might be long, she might have a nice big snoz, who knows what she has. But at the end of the day, it's up to us to push out what we want to focus on and sit back what we don't. Ultimately, like the face is the light and the hair is the shadow. So that's something that uh, I try to teach in my academy in Atlanta. Standing the client up to the level while you're cutting the outline ensures an even cut in proportion to the silhouette. Now I'm really, 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 really passionate about this. As a matter of fact, I know I have some French uh, uh, give a little love for those people who have already been in my classroom and know how passionate I am about standing the client up. And here's why. If I was going to draw this picture, doesn't, doesn't it make a lot more sense for me to, or an artist to paint a painting on an easel or to be up in a way so that we can actually look at it? When a woman is seated, just like I am right now, we tend to always be a little like this, right? And so as stylists, we're looking down on the things that we are cutting. And when you're looking down on the things that you're cutting, you actually have issues with getting things even. Now, I know that none of you out there have ever had an uneven haircut. No, not you. But one of the reasons is because we let the shoulder get in our way when we're trying to cut things long or we're trying to turn the head. And so the fact that I stand a guest up and I can actually see her perfect silhouette 
It's going to help me so much understanding my fob lines, understanding where to open and close, as I mentioned before, and more importantly, having an evenness in my haircut. Building the haircut from the top down permits the hairdresser to follow the natural spiral of that hair growth and the shape of the head allowing the soft moving layers. Now, I have a new grandbaby. I think maybe some of you might have seen my little Everly James on my Instagram, possibly onto my Facebook. But one thing that I have noticed about her crazy hair, if you've tuned in to some of her amazing hairdos lately, is that that spiral of how that grows on the top of her head is so obvious to me now than ever before. And so what I love about French cutting is the fact that those layers follow the shape of the head and they follow naturally with gravity. Think about it for a minute. If you are going to build a haircut up, is that really how gravity goes? Last time I looked, and gosh knows, gravity is getting the best of me in this quarantine, everything I've got is going down, right? So when you're cutting hair, you wanna follow the natural shape of that head so that that hair and that hair layer falls naturally and it actually moves with gravity, just like you move your hair. And so we prefer to start our layering and our guides at the top of our head and then work down falling perfectly like a shingle on the roof and perfectly with the natural spiral of that head shape. And if there are any other questions right now, please feel free to ask those questions. And I, of course, will try to answer as best and as quickly as I can in this watch party. Uh, and I really want you to know that how I plan to teach this is to try to segmentize um, I was telling Jameson this morning that it's really, really difficult for me because when I'm in the classroom, I have two days to teach this information. So when someone asks me a question about something, this old squirrel tends to go that way when she needs to be this way. So I'm going to try my best to stay focused on what I'm teaching today in this episode of Pardon My French, and then I'll go into a building on that because I've never tried to segmentize this. I've certainly never tried to film in my own home in my basement in my workout room as a matter of fact. If you watched my Facebook live last night, I gave a little tour of my basement of uh, my journey and who I am and what I am and this is just really, you know, we're all talking about reinventing ourselves and this is just a way that I feel like uh, I have really reinvented my classroom and um, I'm loving every minute, but I'm missing every minute too. And I know you are too. We're all missing the hugs and the love and the things that our guests give us um, on a daily basis. So I know, I know too how you're feeling. You know, I know too what it's like to try to get up some days for sure. But back to the British technique. So the British technique is more like that of an architect. A British hairdresser sees a strong shape and has less softness to the haircut. Now again, like I said in my disclaimer, I, uh, I don't want to say that I don't love a British haircut, but they're different. It's like Spanish is different than French. Um, and for me, what a British haircut is, is more like a hat. You know, it's a shape that we actually sit on the head and wherever that shape is cut is how it falls onto that head. So therefore, um, the haircut shape builds from the bottom up and is more aggressive towards the features. I mean, if you think about or if you study any kind of great British hairdressers, and there's so many fantastic, fantastic uh, British haircutters out there now, if you are out there and you study the shape, it's all about shape. It's all about hat. It's all about creating, um, you know, a hard line or a hard bang or, or something um, uh, like that. Uh, whereas a French haircut is a bit more, um, uh, has more movement to it, if you will. Therefore, the benefits to the client of the French technique are that they have wash and wear hair with four different looks in each haircut. Um, that's something that's always been really amazing to me when I am working on a photo shoot and I you know, we want to get our dollar or the value of our dollar of our model out of it, right? So when you get ready to do a photo shoot, for instance, you, 
you don't necessarily just say, okay, I'm going to find a girl, I'm going to cut a bob, I'm going to have a bang, and it's going to have, you know, five or six colors or whatever it is that you're going to do, and I'm just going to photograph that look. Well, that's great, but that's expensive, trust me. Um, because you need to make the most out of your makeup artist. You need to make the most out of your clothing stylist. You need to make the most out of your photographer. And everything in between, because time is money, right? So what I love about French cutting, and what I was showing about some of my work and things last night on my Facebook Live, was that I get four different looks in each haircut. So it is very easy for me to take a woman who I've done her layering on, and pop in a new type of style, whether it's, um, you know, with a flat iron, a curling iron, whether it's uh, changing the part, uh, changing the bang, changing the angle. Um, also, what I love about French cutting, and I know that some of you out there that have been doing it understand what I mean when I say this, and that is that my guest feels like they are a part of the beautifying process. And what I mean by that is I stand them up to shut them up. And in a time like this, now more than ever before, we are gonna have to be so efficient back behind the chair. We're gonna be able, to, we're gonna need to be able to do haircuts quicker than ever before. Why? Because we've got a backlog of months of guests that we're getting ready to have to get in, number one. And number two, we've gotta change the way we do business. We gotta change the way we think about business now. We've gotta think about the time value of money and the time of your value of time you know sitting around and entertaining your guests in the chair is going to be a thing of the past for a while right because we need to minimize the amount of time we spend so that we can maximize the amount of money we can make but more importantly the safety in which we're going to have to be practicing and so that's why i think that french cutting will be amazing and they do feel like they're a part of the, uh, the professionalism of the system and that they're a part of that beautifying process. You know, when I go to the dentist or to the doctor and they make me put on a gown or they put that magnet on top of me when I lay back to get my teeth cleaned, it makes me know they're in charge. And when I stand a guest up and I do, um, in, the, in my heyday, I would do 35 guests a day, um, now I do probably 20 guests. I'm still behind the chair. I still see guests in my salon. That's a, one thing a lot of people don't know about me. They think that I just travel from show to show and trade show to trade show and teach in the classroom or teach in my academy in Atlanta, which I do and I love. But I'm still a hairdresser like you. I'm still in the salon cranking it out just like you. Why? Because it keeps a pulse on who I am and it really connects me to my hair community. Why? Because if I have a student in the classroom that wants to talk about Sally, I got a Sally too. I know what the challenges are. I really feel like as being an authentic educator is being able to actually advise my student on the same issues that she or he is having, just like those issues that I am having. Uh, so I love being uh, in the salon and I, I honestly feel like that's going to be where I spend my last breath is working behind that chair because as long as it will give me life, I will, I will be there to, to support it because I love it. I love my guests. I love giving back and selling happiness for a living. But more importantly, I love my craft. And I think that when I stand a gal stop and I make her turn and I make her move and I make her be a part of that beautifying process, that takes good to great. You know, what you're doing right now, just maybe kind of jumping from one side to another. And as I always say, a lot of times people shake and pray, you know, they take that section and they, they cut it, they drop it, they shake it and they pray on it and they talk to it. Hey, how you doing? You know, is this going to work? I think, I think that's, that's okay for a certain amount of time, but I think really if you are gonna elevate yourself as a stylist, you gotta spend a bit more time understanding the mechanics and understanding the pourquoi of French cutting and the measurement and exactly what happens when, and that's what we call it, the pourquoi, what happens when I drop it. But more importantly, 
getting your guest engaged in that process. To the stylist, the French technique enables the hairdresser to work smarter, not harder, with a simple, fast, foolproof technique. Their hands command new disciplines like that of a tailor. Okay, so that is uh, in, in, in summary, uh, some of the differences between uh, French cutting and British cutting. But before I uh, finish up here, I've got about 10, maybe 10 more minutes or so left, I wanna go through a couple things. Number one, about how I hold the shears um, and how I do that, and, and a bit about a contest that I wanna have with all of you who are tuning in and viewing out there. So when we say that their hands command new disciplines like that of a tailor, I wanna to talk to you about that. So what is vastly different in what I do that's very different than the British technique is that my shears are all have a bent shank. So this shank is a butterfly handle. I hold it all the way through to the base of my finger. Do you see that? So that is very, very different than what you do in your normal cutting style, which is like this. My cutting style is a butterfly handle bent shank for no carpal tunnel. So when I am actually cutting my basic outline, my scissor does the work for me. One of the reasons that's important, this is an ice tempered stainless, there's no rusting to it, and it's sharpened at a 45 degree angle. So think with me for a minute. A Japanese shear is a convex uh, uh, sharpening, which means that both blades are sharpened exactly the same. What that means to you is when you cut the hair, it cuts like this. Well, in French cutting, we actually saw the hair. So I hold my shear all the way down to the base of my finger like this. And just as if I was wrapping a gift at Christmas, you know, when you hit the sweet spot of your scissor, basically what you're doing is you're sawing. So my scissor is never actually closing. You see the difference? That's closing and that is sawing. So as I am actually cutting the hair and holding the hair, and I'm gonna just bring a quick mannequin head in here, so bear with me. So as I'm actually working on that hair, let's get a little Greta in here. This is called improvising, so everybody be patient with me. So as I'm actually using my shear, I'm gonna hold my comb all the way down to the base of my finger, look at that. So, and, and sorry, I pardon the nails, but uh, they too are suffering in this process. It's a good thing I'm, I have long bangs to hide my unibrow too. But nonetheless, I'm holding my comb all the way down to the base of my finger like this. My scissor is in, I make a V, and actually what I'm doing is I am combing that hair with one motion of my scissor, my comb together. And as I'm combing, and we'll talk through this with the next episodes, I'm actually combing, I'm locking, I'm holding, I'm opening, and I'm sawing. So this never leaves my hand. So you'll see that I never actually take my section, hold my comb, transfer my comb, snip, 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 snip my pieces. I actually hold my comb and my scissor together, comb that section, lock it into the back, comb it up in the direction of which I'm going to cut, open my shear, put my shear in and saw. So those things never move. Now you'll notice that that is not the movement of me dropping my comb away. It's actually the movement of me just turning my wrist. And why the shear is so important is because it has a bent shank. So I don't hardly have to turn my wrist that little bit. That little bit allows me to follow the shape of my angle in which I'm going to cut and make sure that I am able to cut it um, directly. Now, one of the things that I wanted to also explain to you that is very important in French cutting, let me make sure, oops, sorry, it's hard because I don't really have a mirror, so I'm trying my best to 
look good and get all this information in at the same time, I hope I'm doing okay, give me some love if I am, um, is that this is a seven inch shear and this is my favorite shear that I use and what I tell my student all the time is the size of your shear should fit the entire circumference of your hand. So the length of your hand is the length of your shear. So if you have a tiny little shear, if your shear is an offset, that methodology doesn't work. So if your shear is an offset shear, um, it's not going to work to hold the comb and the shear at the same time. Doesn't mean you can't cut French, I'm not trying to say go throw your scissors away, but you'll need to add into your arsenal the right kinds of scissors for that process. So um, I also have um, a six inch straight shear, which is not as curved and beveled for folks who, who feel like they like to cut and release their comb and don't like to hold the comb uh, in the hand at the same time, as well as a six and a half um, inch um, uh, bent. So six and a half inch straight, six and a half inch uh, curved, as well as my baby big seven. And the reason why I love seven is because I can take that joker and really wrap, uh, wrap that gift really fast and hit that sawing of that sweet spot. So you'll never actually hear that when I'm cutting hair. You'll only hear that. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed listening to a little about what we're doing here in this process. I want to tell you about a contest that I want to run with each and every one of you out there. If you could just take a picture of yourself watching me and post that on our Instagram, make sure to hashtag French cutting, oh, excuse me, French cut with candy. Also make sure to tag Sunlight's Balayage so I can find you. And guess what, my friends? Every episode, I'm gonna announce a winner to win a free pair of shears just for you. And also, just so you'll know that today's coupon code on Sunlight's Balayage is, pardon my French, I am going to offer each and every one of you 30% off on all of my cutting tools and everything. You know, at a time like this, I just want to help my fellow hairdressers. My brothers and sisters who are out there who are struggling to reinvent themselves and to think of new ways to be better. Uh, and I hope that my having the opportunity to teach you and to show you some cliff notes of what we do here in the French cutting world, one day that the two of us can be together in the classroom again. I'm gonna have a uh, cut camp in July and you have no idea how I'm praying that that's not canceled too. But I look forward to seeing each and every one of you tomorrow. Make sure to tune in 12 uh, o'clock noon Eastern Standard Time. I made sure I did that for all of my West Coast folks out there so you didn't have to get up too early, but you can still have coffee with me to watch this watch party. Make sure to jump over to my Facebook page and just look up Candy Shaw, or uh, obviously if you're on Instagram, uh, you can also look up uh, Facebook backslash The Bali Mama. But nonetheless, I enjoyed tuning in with you today. I enjoyed this watch party. I wanna give you a big fat virtual hug. I love each and every one of you out there. I am so looking forward to getting back to work but let's stay in the classroom together for the next five episodes, and I promise you won't be sorry that you pardon my French. Goodbye, everyone.